Hi everyone, my name's Darren and I recently graduated from year 12 at the end of 2020. For those of you who might not know, I live in Melbourne, Australia, and for us, year 12 is that final year of high school schooling. So from March of this year, I'll actually be starting medicine at Monash University, which is really exciting. So the reason I started this YouTube channel is because I wanted to share some of my experiences with VCE and with the different subjects with you guys. Um, I think I had quite a diverse range of subjects. Um, I did seven subjects in total, and I also had quite a unique journey. I repeated one subject and I started a couple of subjects late. So I think that can hopefully help me relate to you guys more as well. So a bit about me, I graduated from Scotch College um, and I was also vice captain of the school. And I think that reflected the fact that I really enjoyed hanging out and chatting to people with different social groups, not just within my friends. So um, I really enjoyed that social aspect of Scotch and uh, that also enabled me to see the ways different people tackled the academia and tackled the different subjects. So I could kind of see what worked and what didn't work for different people, which can hopefully give me and help me give you guys better advice as well. So with regards to VCE, I scored 99.95 and I did seven subjects in total. So chemistry was the one that ended up not counting. And the other six were math methods, uh, specialist maths, English, English language, Latin, and Chinese. So I'll pop my study scores and all that on the screen now. So for today's video in particular, I wanted to talk about what I did in those one, two weeks leading up to school starting and what I thought about what I did. So in retrospect, was it useful or not? I'll also share what I recommend you guys do. So out of the seven subjects I took, I'll be talking about four subjects today. And these are the main ones which I think the majority of you guys will likely be doing. So that's English, math methods, specialist maths, and chemistry. As for a term one SAC approach and how I sort of stayed on top of my subjects, I'll be making a video on that later. So as for now, I'll leave the four subject timestamps in the description below and enjoy. This is the subject that the most students do and it also has that infamous three hour, three essay exam at the end of the year as well. So what I did in those last one, two weeks is also what I recommend you guys do because I found it really prepared me for those first couple of sacks without being too overbearing or time consuming. So the way it works is we had four texts in total. Our creative one was Tony Jordan's Nine Days. Our text response was Euripides' The Women of Troy. And our two comparative texts were Ransom and The Queen, which was a film. So the comparative text comes much later in the year. Whether you watch the film or read the novel is entirely up to you. But what I really do recommend is to read those first two texts. A lot of people skip this and don't do this until school starts, but I think it's really crucial to get ahead of before all the sacks and other subjects come rushing in. No matter how boring the play or novel is, as long as you read a couple pages each day and a couple chapters, you can get through it in the next week. So for me, I was quite lucky. We switched out from Shakespeare in 2020. And as you can see, this is quite a thin play. And inside the language is in much more plain English than Shakespeare's was in as well. Um, as with Tony Jordan's Nine Days, it was quite an original novel. So that was quite easy to read as well. So what I recommend you do if you want to extend yourself. Uh, with the creative text, I recommend you be on the lookout for techniques and stylistic features that the author often returns to. Uh, for example, this may be onomatopoeia, metaphor, simile, or perhaps things like the author uses a lot of long sentences, or maybe the author uses a lot of short exclamations. Because in the first act, teachers often ask you to emulate the author's style and write sort of another section of the book. And knowing what the author uses and how the author writes really helps out here. With the text response play or novel, uh, what I found really helpful is just reading consciously and being careful of any themes and any quotes that stick out at you. So whenever I saw things like that, I just highlight them or circle them and write a quick note to myself on the side. So these are particular quotes that might stand out to you. So I didn't intentionally seek out these uh, techniques that the author uses or these quotes and themes, but just read with a conscious mind and be aware of what you're reading um, so that this really pays off later on in the year. You won't have to reread the books because that first time you read it was really solid and built up your, fun and built up your foundations really well. 
So a mistake I see some people making is they go too overboard. So rather than not reading their text, they go too much on the other side and they start making quotes lists and, and like a themes list and things like that. Now, I think it really depends on the person, but I think quotes lists are going a bit overboard because usually at this stage, um, for me at least, I didn't know my play too well. So I think the best way to do quotes is if you know what they're supporting, if they're um, for a particular theme or a particular argument you're putting forwards. If I'm not familiar with the text, I don't feel really comfortable just grabbing a lot of quotes that I think sound good and making a list of them. So I don't recommend that because it also takes a lot of time as well. Um, of course, each individual is different, but ultimately what I really do suggest you do is to read creative texts um, and read the text response text with a conscious mind. Um, so don't really be doing other things, just concentrate on reading it in that moment. And that one thorough read will really pay off later in the year. So next up is math methods. Uh, this subject is a prereq to a lot of courses, which is also the reason why a lot of people do it. So for me personally, during the summer holidays and during those last one, two weeks, I really pushed myself to learn as much of the course as I could um, because I was decent with my maths. I found that I could take the liberty of doing that. And also because a lot of the three, four material overlaps with one, two, or is simply an extension of it. So I found that I was capable of working through the questions and the knowledge. Um, I think if you're not so confident with your maths, really take it slow. Um, if possible, find out from your student coordinator uh, what topics are on that first sack so you can associate yourself with them earlier. So rather than those, those six, seven weeks of term one before the sack to learn the material, you get that extra seven to 14 days. So then you can really digest the information better and be better prepared for that first sack. So what I thought I could have improved on actually was that I think I rushed through the material a bit too much. Um, while the conceptual knowledge was fine, I think I should have done a bit more, more questions and been more conscious of myself when I was doing the questions, thinking about the different ways I could be tested on the material and also what the question was really asking me. Um, so overall, I think what I recommend, if you're good at maths, sure, go for it. Um, learn through as much of the material as you can, but at the same time, expose yourself to a variety of questions so that once you're done with the topic, you can see the different types of way they can test you on it and you're confident in answering and manipulating your working out to match that. Um, if you're not so confident with maths, I'm um, really important to try and get on top of the information early and try to understand it early on and to contact people who can help you with that um, so that you get that extra time to associate yourself with the information so that you're fully prepared for that first sack. So third is chemistry. Um, if you're interested in studying medicine, chemistry is a prerequisite into that course. For me personally, I knew that chemistry was very likely going to be my seventh subject, which meant that it wouldn't count towards my ATAR. Uh, firstly, because of the scaling that chemistry has compared to other subjects. And secondly, because I was better and more confident with my Englishes and my maths than with my science. Uh, but never once did I give up on chemistry. Um, did I um, put in like lackluster effort? It was only towards the very end of the year that I diverted my energy into other subjects more, um, but I will speak about that later. So what I did during the holidays was I completed all my holiday homework. Some people don't do that, but I think it's really important to do. Um, Scotch gave some good holiday homework, which cemented our knowledge of year 11 chemistry and also introduced us to some year 12 concepts as well. If you're looking to excel in chemistry, um, just be aware that chemistry is different to subjects like math methods. I do not recommend just breezing through the material and sort of understanding one and just moving straight on because I think chemistry, all the topics are so broad, are so deep and have such intricacies to them. So I think it's really important to understand and associate yourself with those little nooks and crannies so that you can really understand each topic. So it's really worth um, finding out which topics are the first ones, which for us was fuels. I'm not sure if that's the same with all schools, but yeah, just to learn that and to understand it is really important. So overall, um, two things. One, at the bare minimum, do the holiday homework, understand the information, um, finish it off in these last couple, couple of days um, or last two weeks. Um, and two, if you really want to do well, which I'm pretty sure you've probably been already putting in the work for it, um, continue to solidify your knowledge of the information. Don't feel too rushed to move 
through the information quickly because there really is a lot to get through. It's much more worthwhile understanding each topic well and making sure you're confident before moving on. So just to emphasize how important it is to understand the topics really well, for me, what really helped me out was my chemistry teacher. He was phenomenal. He would sometimes spend an entire lesson simply on one question, explaining the variations of it, explaining the tricks about it. And that sort of covering of all the bases related to a topic meant that I didn't have to study as much outside of class to prepare for SACS, which really came in handy later in the year um, when a lot of SACS came rushing in and even for the exam as well um, for other subjects. It meant I still could do well in chemistry without having to um, consume a lot of time. So finally, we have specialist maths, a subject renowned for its high difficulty and its high scaling. I took a similar approach with spec as I did with methods and I tried to get through as much of the content as I could during the summer holidays and those one, two weeks before school started. So I actually got up to mechanics, which for the COVID year was that last topic, but for you guys, you'll likely have population and statistics after that. However, I don't think this way of doing things was really worth it. It was really time consuming and tiring where it didn't really have to be. Um, I think the main reason being that special is different to methods. I think with methods, if you're proficient with maths, the concepts are not that hard to get um, to understand. With things like the tangent, you can draw it, you can visualize it, you can see how it works. Whereas with special topics like complex numbers were quite hard for me to conceptualize. So I'd read the, um, the, the textbook and I'd do some of the questions and I thought I understood the information. But now looking back and looking back later in the year, um, those, I, I sort of rushed too much through it and I didn't really understand the information. So I had a tutor from, um, I had a tutor throughout the year and he helped me a lot. He encouraged us to derive formulas like the scalar resolute and the vector resolute and understanding the why behind these kind of messy formulas um, helped me out a lot. And he also showed us the applications of friction and what happens when friction changes and the visualization of these concepts helped me ground, helped ground my understanding of these quite airy topics. And I thought that helped a lot. So no matter, well, even if you're really good at maths, I do recommend you take the time to acquaint yourself with the topics. Um, for me, these topics like mechanics um, were really different to anything I've learned before in one, two. I mean, some schools don't even have one, two. So I think it's really worthwhile to understand the, um, the topics at hand and sometimes even hop on VCAR and have a look at some of the older exam questions and see how you can be tested on these abstract concepts. I think that will set you really well for term one. It really helps you for that term one and term two assessments. So for me, Scotch was good. They provided us with holiday homework for chemistry. So I just made sure to do that and to understand the knowledge um, and the concepts that I was to excel in chemistry. It's not like math methods where you try and push through all the concepts as much as you can. I think because chemistry, the knowledge is so deep and um, both in depth and also it has like very big width. As up in SACs and in, and in exams. So no matter how That's it for the four subjects, what I did, what I thought about what I did, and what I recommend you guys do. It's not that long till school starts, so in addition to your holiday homework and the things I said earlier, just have fun and relax. Go out with friends, especially with these loosened restrictions, play some sport, play some games. All VC requires is consistent effort, so make sure in these next little bit of time, just relax and make sure you're energized for the start of term one. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, uh, and stay tuned for my next one. See you next time.